Okay, I hear you, but Yuka sucks, and I don't say that lightly. My co-founder, who's a dentist, and I have reached out to them over and over. Why? Because the sources they cite for calling nanohydroxyapatite dangerous aren't even in English, and a lot of them aren't even about nanohydroxyapatite. One of the papers that they link in our listing is about a completely different ingredient. We've asked them repeatedly to fix it. The replies, crickets. Meanwhile, people see a red warning label, panic, and toss a product based on incomplete, outdated, or flat-out irrelevant information. Let's talk about this. Yucca doesn't consider concentration. It just flags ingredients for existing. That's like saying water is dangerous because too much of it can kill you. Yes, some ingredients have risks, but only when used in unsafe amounts, and sometimes it can depend on the particle size or shape, not just the concentration. To be clear, our toothpaste is fully compliant with SCCS safety guidelines, the European Scientific Committee that reviews cosmetics ingredient safety. That opinion was published after the UCA app's outdated sources, too. So I'm just saying, if you're the kind of person who likes to read primary sources, and I hope you are, I highly recommend Googling SCCS European Union Final Opinion on Hydroxyapatite. It's a long deep dive into everything from mechanism of action to safety, including particle shape, size, distribution, and dissolution. It's incredibly thorough and backed by years of research. So let's be honest here. An app made to scan snacks and deodorant should not have more power over your decisions than actual science. Nanohydroxyapatite is the same mineral your enamel is made out of. It's been used in Japan as a fluoride alternative for nearly as long as fluoride has been used in the United States, and it's backed by decades of research. In 2025, we shouldn't be blindly trusting app scores over peer-reviewed science.